everyone, my name is Daniel Laskwitz and in this video I'm going to talk about Power Automate and Excel scripts. A little while ago Power Automate gained the feature to actually use Excel scripts in Excel. And that's really nice because um, it's been there for a little while, uh, the Office scripts, the Excel scripts in particular. And it gives you a little way like JavaScript way to do stuff in Excel. For instance, creating tables, entering data, renaming tables, all kinds of things. And that really makes it nice to work with Excel. There are already a lot of actions in the Excel uh, for business connector, uh, but some of the functionality isn't that straightforward. And then you would like to use the Excel scripts. So when there is an action in the Excel um, for business connector, make sure to use that and see if it fits your needs. And if it doesn't, you can always use the Excel scripts as a fallback. So with that, I want to move to the desktop and show you how it works. Here we are on my desktop and I am currently in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. If you want to change the setting to be able to use Excel scripts in Excel online, you have to go to the settings part here. And it could be that um, it's already um, not available here. Um, so then you can use show all and it would show the settings part in here as well. Then you can select org settings and you will have tons of options in here. Uh, and in this case, we are going to look for the office scripts part. And when you find that, you can select it and it will give you a sidebar. And in this sidebar, um, you can see that it um, says, please allow up to 48 hours for office script settings changes to take effect. In my intro, I said 24 hours, but it is actually 48 hours. But um, I did this uh, earlier today and within an hour I was able to use the Office script in here. So maybe for Excel it's faster than for other stuff in there, but for me it um, worked really nice actually. So I just ticked the box here, I saved the changes and an hour later I was able to create a, an Excel file in Excel for web and start using it. So when we move to the other tab here, I already have a file here called test Excel script and there's nothing in here. I just have a sheet in there, sheet one, um, and there are, isn't any data in here. It's just empty. So the first thing you're going to notice when you are working with Excel script is that um, you have an automate tab now. So this tab um, gives you a couple options. You have the record actions uh, part where you can actually record some uh, steps that you want to do. And then uh, you also have the code editor if you want to do it all by just scripting. So in this case, I'm going to use the record actions part. And I already see that I am recording. So in this case, I want to create a table. And I first want to add the headers and then I want to create the table. So in this case, I'm going to just select the a one cell and I'm going to add first name in here. I'm going to use last name in here. I'm going to add age and I'm going to add country in this case. So when I would select all these parts, I can select insert table. I can select the checkbox here uh, to tell the action that I have headers in here and I can select OK. Now I have a table with headers and an empty row in here. Next, I also want to go to design because I want to rename the table. So in this case, I'm going to rename this table to uh, people table. And now when I would click on a different part in this uh, Excel, I can just stop recording. Now I can call this um, script. I can give it a name. So I'm going to uh, select this and say create people table. 
I already did that before. So uh, in the dry run, I already did that. Um, and I can give it a description, uh, creates a table for people. Um, headers are first name, last name, age, and country. And now I can save it. You don't have to fill in a description, but it's nice to do that because then you see a little bit more about what it is actually doing. Um, there's also a way that you can share it with others in this workbook so that other people that have access to this workbook can also run the uh, script in here. Uh, but in this case, when I select edit, I can see the script that has been generated in here. So this is really, really easy to, to use functionality. So let's try it out if it really works. So let's delete this one and run this uh, script in here and see if it will add the same functionality. So select run and there it already is. Let's select the table to see if at the design, oh, we get the table four. So it actually doesn't record the um, changing of the table. So that's one of the things that uh, doesn't work yet. But if you want to change that, uh, you can also um, change that as well. So I can select let new table name equals uh, new table dot and then set name and then I can put a name in between here and close it down. So let's call this people table. And now when I save it and I can delete this part in here, I can run it again and see if it will show me the people table name. And there we go. So sometimes it records it and sometimes it doesn't. So it's really nice to have both ways available to you so that you can um, actually change it when it doesn't record it. So that's really nice. Um, and now I actually want to try this to hook it up into uh, Power Automate. So let's just delete this because if I would run it from Power Automate and uh, the table is still in there, I would get an error. Uh, so I don't want to have that. Um, let's select manager flows here, create a new flow, um, create an instant flow, and we're gonna call the uh, flow create people table and create this. So we're not gonna use any inputs in there. We can do that, but I'm gonna show that a little bit later. Uh, let's add a new step and um, we're going to use the uh, Excel online business connector in here and we're going to run script because that's the action we need. It's still in preview, so be aware. Uh, when you select that, you uh, will get uh, a couple of pickers here where you can uh, select a location. And when I do that, I hope it will run a little bit faster. OneDrive for business, I can select OneDrive as a document library. I can select my file, so I can select the te test Excel script.xlsx and then I also have the um, script available in here so I can create people table here. Um, it doesn't get any input, so this is fairly easy for me. I can just save this one and test out the flow and see if it will work. So let's just perform the trigger action, save and test. I have to click continue here and run the flow. And I think that there's gonna be an error. Let's hope that <laughs> there will be an error. Um, and let's see what will happen. It usually takes a little time before it gives me the error. I've seen like 10, 11 seconds or 12 seconds. Uh, before it shows me an error. Uh, it's a little bit longer even. So let's open this one up and here I can see the message and it says, we were unable to run the script. Please try again. Worksheet collection dot 
get active worksheet is not allowed when run via uh, Power Automate. Please modify your script uh, to specify a target worksheet. For more information, well, see some kind of link. So let's see and go there. Um, here we go. Open that one. And now I can see some documentation in here. Um, I think that I can also go to the sample scripts here. Oh, let's click scenarios, task reminders with Power Automate. Now you can see some scenarios that um, are done with Power Automate. So if we look here at the script here, um, it says here, let sheet workbook get first worksheet. And if you remember from the, um, from the flow run, it said the worksheet collection dot get active worksheet. And the reason that this, this fails is because I created the Excel script in uh, a user scenario. So I had the Excel file open and then I ran the Excel script. So there was an active worksheet in there. And when you run it from uh, Power Automate, it doesn't have an active worksheet because it's just running it um, at, in, in, the, in the context of that uh, process. So in this case, um, I want to change the Excel script around. And when we go to the uh, sample scenario, you can see already that it uh, has a function get first worksheet. And maybe I just want to do that in here. So here you can see in the, uh, in the editor that I have the let selected sheet workbook get active worksheet. And I want to change that to workbook dot get first worksheet. So let's see how that uh, will work. So get first worksheet and I can just close it down here and I can save it again. So now it actually will save it and the red dot that you saw in, in between um, that is now gone because I already saved it. So it also has some nice ways um, that uh, to see that you didn't save it. So if I select backspace here, you can see already the, um, the little star here. And it says that I don't have any um, unsafe change or I have unsafe changes. So when I select this, it's all done. Um, I think that this is good now. So let's try it again and go back to uh, my run here and select resubmit and see if it will work right now. So let's try again. It will probably take some time now. And then I hope this will actually work. There we go. It ran successfully and let's check the test Excel script.xlsx. Here we are, and it already created the Excel script. So this is really a nice way to record actions and uh, create some very specific scenarios in here um, that you would uh, also um, create in uh, maybe uh, Excel scenarios, VBA scenarios, those kinds of things. Um, and I think that this is, um, yeah, it's pretty easy to use. Um, you still do need to know a little bit about scripting because it is JavaScript uh, or kind of JavaScript. Uh, and it, um, yeah, it, it gives you the ability to easily with not a lot of lines of code, you can, you can do some cool stuff with that. So with that, I want to uh, close off this first video. I'm gonna create another one uh, where we're gonna use some inputs, where we are gonna use some outputs in the Office scripts or the Excel scripts. But for now, I think this is a good start uh, for this type of video. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked it. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have some questions, please leave them in the comments below. 
I'll also leave all the um, links that I use here. Uh, so the sample scenarios, I will uh, put a, a link in there as well. And the author scripts documentation, of course. So um, I think you have all that you need to get started with that. And um, yeah, please uh, also watch the uh, follow-up video that I'm gonna place in the upcoming weeks. So thanks a lot and see you soon.